Hey, this is Trout Bitten Tips. Thanks for joining me. Uh, the key to catching trout is covering water. Find feeding fish, find the hungry ones. Uh, but wading a river is often difficult, sometimes impossible. Uh, but then, if you add a third point of contact with a wading staff, um, it, it can be amazingly effective if you rig it the right way. If you rig a wading staff the wrong way, it'll slow you down, make your day worse. If you rig it the right way, it'll give you access to water that you just couldn't reach otherwise. So let me show you my favorite way to rig a wading staff. So this small river got a big shot of water the other day. And in a piece of river where I rarely need a wading staff, today it's gonna help me out a lot. Uh, my friend Paul Almquist, when I saw him with his wading staff and the way he rigged it, I thought that's the way to do it. And shortly thereafter, uh, I wrote an article on trout pit about how to rig it and all the details are still in that article. It's, that article is still one of the most read articles on trout pit. It's helped a lot of people. Um, I'll show you how I do it. All right, so let me show you the staff. I keep it tucked away at the small of my back because I, I don't want to extend it all the time. I'll show you the retractor in a minute. But the staff, uh, they call it a trekking pole. You could buy other things, but I'm telling you, this is the way to do it. Um, it's very light, um, so it can be used with a retractor very, very easily. It extends. And there you go. I don't want it real tall. You can adjust it. I can adjust this and make it, oops, I can adjust it and make it taller. But I keep it at the shortest setting because I don't want it up here because it'll just get in my way. Anyway, it's real light, it's foldable, and it's affordable. You can buy two of these. They come in a pair all the time. Oh, I think they're 35 or 40 bucks. And this staff, I'm going to say, has 200 days on it, 150 days on it. Um, something eventually happens. Usually this, this little leaf spring inside there will corrode. But I mean, you know, hundreds of days on one staff is not bad. All right, so the other component is the retractor. You have to have something to keep it right here on your hip. Uh, gear keeper retractor. If you, you can use something else, but I'm telling you, these are the best. I've had this one again for this is probably 300, 400, 500 days, I bet, just on this simple retractor. They make different tensions. This is a 12 pound retractor. If you go heavier, like the 30 pound retractor, it's a big clunky thing on your hip. Um, you go lighter though, it won't retract the staff all the way. These little details kind of matter. So gear keeper retractor, 12 pound, and you want it to go all the way back. All right, so the key to rigging this up is to keep the slack out of the system. No slop. You want to be able to reach down and know exactly where your waiting staff is going to be. That makes it easy and convenient and efficient. So these uh, wading staffs come with a web handle that comes out here. Now that's slack. Get rid of it. Take it out. Um, and I take, there's a pin that runs through the center of this handle. And I put a zip tie around that pin. And then I take the male end of the gear keeper and run that through the zip tie. Of course, cut off all the slack and take the slop out of the system. So I also don't want any slack here at the gear keeper itself. Again, I'm gonna connect this up and then no slack down here. So for me, I mount this gear keeper to a sturdy wading belt. If you find another way to do it, great, but this really works for me. This is a nice sturdy wading belt and then I just, again, use zip ties to keep that gear keeper on there. I will say, I like this little bit of rotation and flexibility to it uh, so that when I'm extending the retractor, you know, it can kind of rotate and move around. I like that. But when I let go, it's right there. I always know right where it is. All right, so having no slop in the system is a big deal to me. I want to know right where my waiting staff is going to be. I get, it's on my left hip. I know where it's going to be. Often, I'll be in the river. I'll be fishing. I don't even have the waiting staff in my hand. I don't need it. And then if I start to stumble, I reach down, grab it, use it. I know where it is. If I, wanna, if I let it go and now I'm out here wading into an even heavier piece of water, and I say, boy, I'd like to have, it's, it's always right there. Which brings me to this point. Put it in your line hand. This is my rod hand, this is my line hand. My line hand is doing some work sometimes, and then I can use it for the staff. My rod hand is always busy, 
There is no point having this staff on the other side and having to change hands. It just makes things so much easier. If you train yourself to use, your line hand is your off hand, usually your non-dominant hand. But you can do it. You know, you can use the waiting staff with your line hand. It just makes you so much more efficient. And you have access to all of this water by using a staff this way. All right, so rigged this way, uh, the waiting staff is an asset, not a liability. You don't want to have to reach for your waiting staff. If it's a distraction, then it takes away from your fishing. Um, but rigged up this way, a waiting staff makes strong waders stronger and fast waders faster. It gives you access to water that you just couldn't reach otherwise. All right, that's it. Fish hard, friends. Josh Jarling. Josh Jarling. Josh Jarling's ready. You have to. That's, yeah, that's not good. This is my guide position right here. I'll, I'll get hate. <clears throat> All right, here we go.